whatever the learning experience I got from mile 70 to mile 101 that's what I ended up getting mm -hmm. changed my life forever I, I thought I had gone through all these different crucibles in my life mm -hmm. and I thought I was at the pinnacle of mental toughness as they call it mental toughness whatever you know it, life, mental toughness is a lifestyle yeah. it's not a class so I was here and I thought man I'm, I'm exactly I'm way up here mental toughness wise my, my mind says great my was sitting there I sat down in this chair and my nutrition was so bad my my plan was so messed up I sat down and I literally had to go to the bathroom so bad I had to go to the bathroom in 12 hours and that wrist cracker was basically a wrist cracker ball because you, you know without the proper water and yeah. so, I, mean, I was just jacked up so I sat there and, and um, my ex-wife um, used to be I don't know if she's or not I don't know what she's doing now but she was a nurse and I was in bad shape but I hadn't really gone to bathroom that bad yet not like I did afterwards but the thing was I couldn't get up my mind was all messed up but one thing I realized that that we get so anxious and in that one or two or three seconds called the one second decision yeah. you seize up but you flood you flood the compartment which is your brain of all this shit the what ifs oh my god you, you spaz out and then you quit and then once you quit you you know you regret it happens all the time in hell week yeah, yeah. 130, you know, 130 hours, you get in the first hour, they freeze your ass off, and you, you, you can't comprehend 130 hours of the shit. You're freezing. You're not going to go home that night. Not, I mean, you know, you're not going to island pasta mm -hmm. to get the you know, pasta meal that night. You, you, your ass is mine. And you can't handle it. So I started just learning these processes of calming my brain down. Mm -hmm. I'm in the worst shape of my entire life. I've gone 70 miles. I've never gone past 20 miles. I'm horrible. It's, it's, it's a great rewarding feeling, but it's also a feeling of of the worst pain I had in my life. My feet are broken, I'm messed up bad. And I had to take this big pile of shit and slowly start to compartmentalize mm -hmm. what was in front of me. Mm -hmm. And the first thing was, you can't stand up. Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure's messed up, so you can't go near 30 miles unless you be able to stand up. Fix that. I got around those issues. I was able to stand up, got on the track again, and I was barely making it on the track. And then this is what changed my life to this day I can't really imagine anything ever topping it. At mile 81, my ex-wife looked at me and she said, you're not going to, you know, we're not going to make this time. Because I was going like a 37 minute miles, barely getting out of the track. The shape I was in at mile 70 was worse shape in my life. I, I can't say it enough. I ended up running the next, I ran 101 miles. I ran the next 20 miles. Didn't walk another step. And I did it in like 18 hours and 56 minutes. And what I believe happened to me is when my mind, body, spirit, everything, for the first time, and that's never happened again since that time, everything really connected. When mm -hmm. my mind knew he's not going to quit this yeah, race. Yeah. Non-negotiable. I gave myself no way out. My mind said, we, got, we have to find more. We've all, all of us have gone through very hard times. But when we're, when we're in a hard time, our mind has a way of forgetting what all we've overcome. I have a way of taking one second when I want to quit and say, okay, you endured this. So I look at my life and how I came up as the ultimate training ground versus most people look at it as why? Woe is me. God, why? Why? I had to flip this upside down and say, hang on a second. God was training me to be one of the baddest men on the planet. That's how he, this was, this was my journey. So when I was in the worst time of my life in Hell Week, I looked at everybody and said, I'm the most trained person here. So I'm looking at the baddest people on the planet. I'm looking at them like this. You guys can't hold a stick. So I started looking at verses like, I don't belong here, versus like, I might be the baddest person to ever come here. Who could have pulled this off? Who could have been given a sewer to live in, in their mind? and say, okay, at birth, I'm gonna put you in the worst place on the planet Earth, and let me see if you can go to the top of the mountain with nothing, but just hard work, grit, and figuring it out, and not putting yourself back in the dungeon every time something got hard. So that's what became wow. my daily voice was, you really are the baddest person on right. the planet. And after a period of time, you start to believe that. And so that's what happened to them, you know, the first hell week, the second hell week, the third hell week, that became my new norm. Yeah. So what most people fear, I can never go through one. I don't want to go through two. Right. Even SEALs will tell you that. That Navy, so I did 18 months in Navy SEAL training. 
only supposed to be six months long. It became my new norm. And that's what people don't do enough of. You're always looking for a new norm. And that's how I, my, my mind started saying, getting beat, suffering, broken legs, this is my new norm. And my mind started changing with the reality of who I want to be. Everywhere we look, we have negativity and impending doom being thrust upon us and put into our lives. Okay, the news fucking sucks. People fucking suck. Everybody is complaining. Everybody's trying to divide everybody and, you know, argue over this or that or this. Dude, it's a stressful time. It's not a normal time. This is not normal. And we should remember that. We need to remember that what's going on in our world right now is not just difficult for you. It's difficult for everybody. Now, certain people might be doing better right now. They might be making money. They might their job might be more secure, or maybe things are going uh, you know better for their fitness or whatever. Here's the point: this shit is stressful, and it's wearing us the fuck out mentally. There's a lot of people out there who are struggling in spite of the fact that they're doing everything they know they should do, and that's who I want to talk to today. Okay, look, guys, this shit pursuing success. Becoming someone who is abnormal. Becoming someone who sets the fucking standard for others. Becoming someone who shows the rest of the world what is possible is a very difficult path. You are going to have people shit on you. You are going to have unexpected circumstances arise. You are going to have the government fucking shut the country down. You are going to have all these things that you never fucking counted on come and smack you in the face over and over and over again. This is just part of being on that path. But here's what I want to point out to you all. Every single one of you. Every single one of you who is struggling right now, you need to understand this. What you're going through right now is necessary. What do you mean it's necessary? It's necessary because what's happening right now is you are forging the fucking skills. You are forging the determination. You are forging the grit. You are forging the fortitude. You are forging all the fucking things that nobody else is gaining because they're sitting on their hands and you're willing to push through. This fire you're feeling, this pressure you're feeling, this frustration you're feeling, this is what is going to make you into the weapon that you are going to become that will then build the life that you are out to build. I need you to understand this. I call it the gauntlet, okay? You cannot develop the skills you need to win consistently without going through the motherfucking gauntlet, all right? And a lot of times when we're going through this gauntlet, we self-pity, right? We talk about how unfair it is. We talk about how fucking hard it is. We talk about how nobody gets it. And guess what? All those things are fucking true. It's not fucking fair. Most people don't get it. Most people have no idea how fucking hard it is for you. And guess what? They're never gonna. So why are you screaming about it? Take this opportunity to recognize that the chaos in your life is actually forging you and improving you because you're choosing to press on when everybody else is falling off. This is how you look at hardships. This is how you look at frustration. You look at it as a tool that's teaching you lessons that are going to become valuable to you maybe tomorrow, but for sure in the near future, and other motherfuckers are not going to have them because they're not willing to push on, okay? So if you're struggling right now and you're having a hard time and you're pissed off and you're frustrated, know two things. One, you're not alone. Two, this is necessary for you to get where you want to go. And if you quit, if you falter, if you stop, all of the pain will be for nothing. And you need to remember that.
rồi còn mỗi xin anh thôi